Well, those of you in the audience will, um, who are um, on the mental health side will, um, will know about borderline personality disorder. And we are, you know, on the whole, to generalise about all of us, you know, if you meet one, you meet them all, not quite, but there are some strong traits across all of us. It's, um, it's a mental illness characterised by extreme emotional pain. I mean, it's literally intolerable. And um, there's a website called, and the name of the website is Anything to Stop the Pain. And that really is how it is. Unsurprisingly, and like many, um, many other people with BPD, I ended up being sectioned, um, which was, um, I mean, probably you know, the most devastating, humiliating experience of my life. It's, um, it's absolutely, it's soul annihilating. I spent a month at St Anne's in Tottenham, um, which is pretty much what you'd expect a Tottenham hospital to be. It's quite street. I love it. I love it. I love being locked up there. Um, <laughs> and, um, and the staff at St Anne's um, were fantastic. Um, I, I could tell. These were great, skilled, compassionate, empathetic, knowledgeable people. But it was inescapable that um, they were not performing to peak, let's say. I mean, basically, we were locked up, medicated and stared at. When I calmed down, I actually had a very, very jolly and relaxed and sort of therapeutic month. But it wasn't because the staff were highly engaged with us. That didn't happen. I think the thing that struck me most was how wasteful how wasteful that month was. It was deeply wasteful, and I would say deeply irrespectful, of staff skills, their professional skills and their personal qualities. Um, and it was also, frankly, wasteful of patients' skills and qualities. I mean, mental illnesses are very, very difficult, like any long-term chronic condition, are very, very difficult to live with. And this would have been a brilliant time to have, you know, um, to have learned, learned how to manage um, my illness better. Anyway, as a result of all that um, and that thinking, I, um, I set up Star Wards, partly to reciprocate the enormous, <laughs> enormous sort of, um, patience and kindness of, of staff, and partly because I wanted to help staff and patients, because it's clear something was going wrong. So what we do is try to um, discover and share great practice. We find out what is going right, what's working well on the wards, and we big it up because we're genuinely excited and enthusiastic. So I'm just to give you a handful of, of examples. There are, there's over a thousand on Wardipedia, one of our other websites. A guy called Andy Jago in Cornwall. So he set up a, a music and podcast studio on the grounds of this mental health hospital. So those lucky patients who go down to um, Bodmin Hospital, they get a, <laughs> a music and a podcast studio. I'm not bitter. It's not like I would particularly want that. I'm fine at St Anne's in Tottenham, but they are lucky. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in inner London, um, jo, the wonderful Jo Spencer um, at, um, um, in Highgate, um, she, when she was modern matron, she set up a weekly dining club where she and a ward manager, who was an ex-chef, so they used his skills. His next chef, he did these amazing pineapple carvings. She would, Joe would sit down with four or five patients each, I think it was a Monday, each Monday, she, Joe would bring <coughs> tablecloths, napkins, and patients who couldn't make it to the dinner club would help with cooking upstairs, and those that could make it would come downstairs and just have a very chilled and rather grand evening. Um, just lovely, lovely, lovely. Not in her job description, but she was doing it. And right across the board, there's a receptionist in a hospital who does drama, so she runs a drama group with the patients. So, we're very interested in um, untapped skills and qualities. So how can you find out what your colleagues, what skills, your colleagues, your patients, your visitors, what are they sitting on? How can, how can we find out? Thank you, that is it. We can ask them. That is it. <laughs> right, moving on. That's it. That is the answer. That is the answer. Yeah, good ask. Yeah. OK, it, it's really worth asking. It doesn't matter whether it's in writing or on a poster or how you do it. Just, just, just ask people. And, and you will get donations of time, videos, books, magazines, contacts, expertise, compassion. You know, it will happen. I think the main thing we do, actually, is be nice to staff. I mean, we are genuinely appreciative. So we reflect that in everything we do. But um, it's not all love. I mean, I mean, or in addition to the love, we, we, we package the love, we package it. So things like our latest resource, Brief Encounters, is actually for staff in general hospitals caring for patients in emotional crisis. Does it work? We would say it does, and, and sort of independent evidence would say it does. Um, a nurse right at the beginning said, it's what I came into nursing to do. 
and the sort of the facts or the stats or whatever, 650 wards are members, that's about 80% of wards in the country. Impact review last year showed that 88% of wards said that um, they were experiencing increased activities, 77, 77% increase in patient satisfaction. So it's transformed a number of wards and it's certainly brought about improvements in hundreds. Really, it's all about making the most of everyone's time and skills, um, everyone, staff, patients, visitors, dogs, we're, you can imagine, evangelical about pets on wards. I want to thank you for your time and your skills, and um, that's it. Thank you.